Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to our Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 special Board of Education meeting. Before we begin, as always, please take a moment to take a look at your cell phones and place them on silent. And once you do that, please join me in presenting the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Let's get going, Mr. Hatfield. Absolutely. Uh, President McFarland. Here. Vice President Rausch. Here. Secretary Hatfield is present. Treasurer Lauterbach is not here at the moment. Uh, Member Ringo. Here. Member Horowitz. Here. Member Blazy. Here. Among that item number two is request to address the board regarding the superintendent search process only. If anybody wishes to address the board, please limit your comment to the subject matter at hand. Otherwise, kindly hold those thoughts until our next general meeting. Anybody wish to come up? Okay. We'll close the floor. Moving on to item number three, Board of Education Matters, superintendent search planning. Uh, we have item 3.1. Discussion regarding the search timeline, schedule, procedures, and postings. I believe that's going to be handled by Mr. Ritchie. Yep. Mike, the floor is yours. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here tonight. And uh, we, I think we have a lot of things in place, so hopefully we're not going to spend a lot of time, but we can a few things. So what we want to talk about tonight um, will be the actual posting that we reviewed last time. And the, the main discussion for tonight will be a salary range. What is that range going to be? And then we'll talk about the advertising package. And I'll kind of walk you through, we we'll revise the timeline a little bit. So I'll walk you through the timeline. I'll kind of explain why the advertising package is staggered the way it's staggered. And then um, we met this afternoon. I met with um, Brian and, and Sarah and Jeff. Am I right? And, and we um, came up with about 20... 21 focus groups, and so we'll kind of go through that and see if we missed any, um, who else we should add to our, to our list. That's kind of the plan, uh, very informal, but let's start with the posting, and um, you should have a copy of the posting in front of you. I think we agreed last time on all the language is, is um, okay, it's just that we added everything we had to add, but I think question was, what is that expected salary range? And I'll build a lot of work on getting some comparables, so thank you. Um, yep. the, the one thing with the comparables, some of those contracts were a little bit older, so we have to be careful to make sure it's apples to apples. I think that's a really good point. The amount of turnover that we saw in the state for superintendent, you know, the, the data that we can pull, you can get every district in the state. But the day that you can poll, it will show the, the date range of the contract. So I think we have to be a little bit careful. Just if we see an outlier, sometimes it's because the contract started like pre-2021, um, if it's an outlier low. so. But, you know, it, in the agenda packet, we had state data, similar districts, in size, so just ranged at 6,500 students to 8,500 students as one comparison set. Looked at other Saginaw Valley League schools, um, whether it was Saginaw Bay City, Saginaw Township, Grand Blank, Lapeer, Mount Pleasant, uh, Traverse City. And then also the, the last comparison set was uh, districts that we compare ourselves to and student test scores. Um, haven't spent a bit of time with the data, I guess just to start off the conversation and then obviously get other people's input is when you look at the comparison districts, so this would be schools like Rochester, Troy, uh, Forest Hills, Birmingham Public, Northville, Gross Point, Bloomfield Hills, Okemos and East Grand Rapids. Um, those schools, the average salary was 20, about 202, 2019. 
but it ranged from 128 to 274. And then the median was 207. Um, again, we're at one, 194 right now um, from Mike's con old contract. So kind of where my, my head initially went was, you know, do you, do you pick like the, the median of the comparison group, which would be a slight increase from where we're at today, um, which may be, you know, a little bit higher than similar sized districts. Um, but again, remember, there are some outliers in uh, comparison district data, for example, like Gross Point um, at 128. Um, you know, I, obviously we don't know the reasons why, but um, there are some outliers in that data. Well, I spent a lot of time going over all the numbers, um, pouring through what we've been looking at, we've been working on trying to produce to get this. And I would jump right out and say I'm totally comfortable if that range is 225 to 275, or if we wanted to push it even further, that it's going to be 250 to 300. I am comfortable in that ballpark. Are you saying for base salary or for base including? salary? Base salary only. Insurance, annuity, pension, vacation, association dues, professional development, all to be negotiated. I would, I'm not I'm certainly not opposed to that. I would advocate, depending on who applies, they may have different priorities they want to find for comp. They may have. They may be, you know, have fewer dependents, and a health insurance package may be a different, mm -hmm. you know, different look for them. So, I would advocate going for an all-in number, okay, and letting the applicant, you know, once we have the candidate, once we've made an offer, let them say, "Oh, I'd like to double two salaries and put this in for a comp." You know, they may want higher association dues. So, if you just budget for a, for a top end. I mean, none of these numbers, I don't think we should aim for the middle. I, I think we should aim high. And I, I'm not, I do not want to be frivolous with money, but this is an important hire. I think when you look at what a school board does, this is the one, if we have one job, this is it. And we are going to see what's out there if we set a range in the neighborhood of 350 for, for the all in salary benefits. I understand where, where that puts us in terms of the top, but it does. Let's see. It does. I don't have a problem. So. I don't have a problem with that either. I just I was giving that range just based on how the posting was worded, but if we need to change the posting the way it's worded, that we are. Looking for a, we are offering a, a comp package in the range of three hundred fifty thousand. Mike, is that something that you see? Not not very often. Normally, you see the base salary and then to be negotiated. Um, it's it's hard to put a number on that total package, not knowing. Um, who the candidate is going to be and what your insurance package is, what you offer in addition to insurance. Um, you, are you going to include any vehicle allowance, um, TSA? Uh, so it, it's hard to do. But I look at, I, I, I'm looking at like, uh, and maybe I'm reading the wrong numbers here, but I'm going to take um, some of them are like 460 for the total package. Like St. Joseph's is 461. Um, trying to find one comparable for our Forest Hills 385 760. And I was looking somewhere in Bowman and, and, and oh, the total package 75 puts us at the top. Right? Okay. And similarly, the 6,500 to 8,500 students. So if we're going to go to the right, I don't disagree with you, but if that's not comp, this is not, not going to be received as well. Back to the 225 to 275, 250 to 300, something in that range. I have a question. Rochester, total package, Rochester, 
Um, uh, the that's a fifteen thousand uh, yeah, child enrollment. They're twice they're, they're twice our size. And I mean, Troy is twelve thousand, and that's a little bit lower. Rochester, I mean, the salary is 274, and the total package is 465. That's 200000 That's 190000 of other stuff. Right. I don't. Look at, look at Oakland. I mean, you, you don't know how they're counting that. Are they counting it as unused days as a buyback? Um, you don't know unless you see the actual contract or read through everything. Uh, there could be uh, payment in lieu of using sick days. Um, so you, you don't know how they calculated that. Yeah, if you pull up the actual contract for, for Rochester, it's base salary 209.741 with a $10,000 tax sheltered annuity and a 403B plan. And then they do have a merit pay for the superintendent's base salary. So to Mike's point, you got you do have to go back and look at each of the contracts individually. You know, did they have a buyout for some reason in one year? What is the best district in the state? Yeah, I it, well, it would be. It would be one of your elite comparisons. I don't have that. Okay. 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 Those are the best things. Okay. 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 Yes. 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 <laughs> so I, I had 225 is where I landed for a base for a base cell, which um, was above all of the SVL districts, I think, as it should be, um, and still above the median. Which I think Phil said was 209. 207, 209. And we don't necessarily have to cap the benefits. Benefits can all be negotiated. So I think it would put a cap on the total package. Um, I, I think it gives us a little flexibility to, to talk stuff and, and let them kind of craft what they're looking for in terms of what it's going to take to come to MPS. Yeah, I think one of the fact iteration is we've got a good district. We've got a really nice community with some amazing support from our community members. We've got a lot of things going for us other than anybody should want to come to this district. So I'm, I'm reluctant to, to just blow these numbers out of the water and not take them into consideration. And that's where I'm personally a little bit uncomfortable going to high 200s for salary. Um, but I think being creative in some of that package, especially, um, you know, John, I think last, last week you had mentioned something creative around compensation based on what we want to see in, you know, our struggling students or our, you know, certain students right. and improving their test scores. I'm more comfortable with adding that um, so merit -based, yeah, merit-based, merit-based uh, incentive plan. But you still got to throw out there that's going to get the attention of the candidate we want, yeah. and two fifty get the attention of the yep, we want. yep. I mean, to me, two fifty seems a bit outside of the range. If we consider that Rochester is kind of this outlier and theirs is 274, I think I'd be really comfortable like 225, 230-ish. 250 seems to go over some other numbers in the middle.
would it make sense to have the range be somewhere between 225 and 250? That anywhere between twenty to fifty thousand is what I've seen, and and the the larger the sour the base salary, the larger the range as well. How about two twenty five to two seventy? Same range. Same range. Same range. Yeah. And the higher you set the range, the higher the, the higher the higher end is. That's what the person is going to try hard to negotiate mm -hmm. is that high end range. Mm -hmm. Right, but not if we set it at two seventy at the range, they're gonna try to try for two seventy five right, plus. Saying, yeah. You know, so if we set two fifty, then that gives us a little bit of if I understand what John is saying, we want to Is that sustainable? Tough question to answer. Putting on the spot there. What if we cut an assistant superintendent? <laughs> 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 How do you like my sense of humor? Oh, yeah. It's a tough end question to answer, yeah. Scott. When you're talking about one employee, and one employee's salary does not impact the overall financial status of the district. You all know from listening to me every single budget hearing that you have to, that 85% of our expenses are salaries and benefits, and um, it's, it's compensation rates that do it. You all know that we have a very healthy fund balance at the time being, but those of you that have been around economics at all, what goes up and down, but you built yourself a very healthy net to be able to make any sort of um, hard fiscal decisions over the periods of years based on your financial um, situation you have. Okay. Is that a yep. close enough non-answer for you, sir? About the best non-answer you can get. Yeah. No. Paper, scissor. I want to be careful about how I say this. There is no, Midland has bigger leader than me. But four of us grew up here. A fifth grew up in Bay City. We know what Midland is. We know how extraordinary the community it is. Because we're all here. We want, and we don't want the usual suspects. We want to attract somebody who's maybe never heard of Midland, Michigan, has no idea how extraordinary it is. And if we don't somehow set ourselves apart from the crowd in this search, we're going to get the usual suspects. And I just, I, if it's twenty-five grand, an extra twenty-five grand, that's going to be money very well. If we get, you know, the next greatest. Superintendent, because maybe never heard of the best superintendent, you know, already here. Swimming in the bottom of the wall, you know, but I think it's worth stretching. And look, I can live with a lower salary as long as there's an openness to some kind of incentive comp to bump it up a bonus structure based on performance, whether the financial performance, academic performance whatever, but I think we need to do more than uh, association dues, car allowance, salary, work, you know, with the things we've been talking about in our committee, we've got some big things coming, and we need a, we need a special leader to help us. So. so to your point, is there any reason we can't write that into the opening paragraph? No. I don't think there is a reason we could not do that. So, yes, we could. We would, we would need to. Because what yeah. they're going to see is that base salary. So if you're, you are talking about incentive pay, there needs to be a sentence in there about above and beyond the negotiated will be some kind of merit or incentive pay. We'll have to word it so it's attractive. So even if we're at 
250. If we have a 10% merit bonus in there, that bumps them up to 275. And then the remainder of the compensation package, which I've got to imagine would be fairly lucrative, especially if we're talking about car loans, is association dues, travel expenses, et cetera, annuities, whatever. Uh, or even do 220. If, it, if 225 is more palatable, 225 with a 15%. You know, yeah, it could be make the incentive bigger so there's an upside to help drive performance. I, I like that. Okay. Can we say in that sentence what factors it's based on? I, I don't think so. I think that's getting too specific. Metrics to be determined. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Specific multi yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I think we'll also want to look at the strengths and the weaknesses of who we do decide to hire and Hopefully, we can draw their, their strengths out and essentially really propelling those forward. Yeah. And at the end of the surge, the person's hired, you know, we'll have that exit meeting. You, you get the dash six months for free. You can put it in there for measuring points and to make sure they succeed. I don't even know if I would go with the percentage. I think that we should say that you will be incentivized by performance bonuses are part of this. Yeah, if you tell them that the performance bonus of perhaps up to yeah, an additional yeah. 15% or, you know, that would be the math thing. If I hit certain targets. Okay, so what's the window? So are we okay with 225 with up to 225 to 250? Base. Base. Yeah, I think I think the. We should fix that two twenty five then. Base. Well, do we need to put that in the posting, or can we just say generous incentives and other benefits to be negotiated? We would put the incentive. Yeah. In that so we know what the incentives are right now. What their potential? Yeah. What the potential? Oh. Okay. Potential max. You mean? Right. Got it. I still think it should be the margin or the, the 225 to 250. I don't want to state. Yeah, okay. 225 to so. up to a percentage, yeah. 15 or 20% okay. based on the Okay. I will wordsmith. I'll use the 225 to 250. I'll smith the um, sent sentences and then we'll get it back to you. And I, I guess I'll need one person to be able to get this looks good. You can set it to me. Okay. Okay. Since we're an established committee, should it go to the three of us just to look at? Or you want to? No, that's fine. Can you copy that? Please, Mike. Thanks. Yep. I don't know if there's a whole lot, rereading this, Mike, I don't know that there's a whole lot of work. Isn't it just with a base salary range to be 225 to 250,000 with merit incentives of up to 20% and other benefits to be negotiated? Yeah. That sounds perfect. Thank you. <laughs> and we don't have to worry about I will still get you a clean copy so you can okay. look through it one more time. And you're okay with the wording about the new superintendent will be required to live within the district boundaries? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. I think we have it. Do we have to put a time time frame on that? In the posting? As far as like by when they have to establish residence. Oh, that's good good yeah, that's a good question. Do we put that in the posting or do we just address it with them or put it in their contract? Usually it would go, it would go in their contract. Yep. Okay, any other questions in the posting? Okay, now I'm using the outline um, of the planning meeting. 
So before we get to the focus groups, I do want to say that your survey was um, opened on December 4th. And I had my, one of my office people emailed me yesterday. And I think you might have a record that says highly your community. Um, I wrote the number down somewhere. That's good. So today, not less than a day, you had 409 completed surveys. That, that's a lot. <laughs> In one day. In a day. It's amazing. So credit, that's a huge credit to your community. Uh, as far as the focus group goes, you can see you have a list. That's a separate document um, that you have. So I'll just kind of read through it so everyone um, understands what, what we're talking about for focus groups. So the Sunday night 7 o'clock one is, is going to be, and it really can be for anyone, but we, we listed parents, PTO, booster clubs, community members. That can be really anyone for that Sunday the Zoom on January 7th. And then starting January 9th, I will be in the district on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Serena will be in the district on the 10th and 11th, and I believe she's going to get here later on on the 9th. Um, so some of those were double booked. That's because we're here. So we'll each conduct the focus group. So we start out on the 9th after school, 345, with the elementary I'm sorry, the secondary staff um, at 4.30, the elementary staff at 6 p.m. that night. And the 9th, we have major uh, business and foundation partners. And then we go the next day, we start off with bus drivers at 9 a.m. And we try to get the time so they're coming back with their bus routes at that time. That's why we pick 9 o'clock. Um, uh, we're going to do four high school focus groups, we're going to do, and I see I only have two on here, but there's actually um, two groups at each of the high schools. So, got four on there. There. okay, um, okay, yep, right, so they're on there, um, then we have um, other business, chamber, governmental representatives, that can be a whole wide range, we're going to get, you know, it's out and emails out to uh, people. Uh, that's Wednesday, January 10th at noon, 4 o'clock with the union leadership, uh, 4.30 with support staff, uh, 5.15 with the ad council. We have a 6 o'clock for parents, booster club, again, community. And um, at 6 p.m. on that same day, we're going to offer an all-staff Zoom and for anyone that person uh, focus groups. Then the, on the 11th, we got the other, the high schools. Uh, again, on the 11th at noon, the Rotary, noon Rotary. And then uh, Thursday, January 11th at 7 o'clock for, again, parents. And then I still have three more to schedule, <clears throat> but they're all Zoom. So we will offer a Zoom um, support staff, and then we'll offer a Zoom nonprofit group, and then a Zoom with the higher uh, people as well. So the one question, what time would be a good time for support staff for a Zoom? Keep in mind their schedules are crazy because they're all different times of the day. So there's never a good time during the day to catch everyone. So if we did an evening one, would anyone participate? And then if we do, what time should that be? Seven? Yeah, I'm doing seven PM. In my guess, seeing the survey results, we are gonna have people participate. <laughs> okay. Good. So any questions on the focus groups? Do we miss anyone? Can you think of anyone else you want to, you would like to add? Mark, do you know if that works for you? They have you pinned at Wednesday, June, or January 10th at 4 o'clock? I didn't check my calendar. All right. actually fly out the next day to a double check my calendar. Okay. All right. And if any of these groups say they won't work, we're 
we are flexible, we can certainly change the dates if we need to. Okay. Okay, then we, go ahead. We had talked um, at the last meeting about uh, retired staff and just wondering where, because they don't necessarily fit with like parents, PTO booster, is there like just a general community open session that uh, fit under? We can add it too. I mean, the because really the the They're com not business. I mean, some of them are going to fall into support staff, right? Where we have the retirees working in the building, in the building. But, but not everybody, right? Like that wouldn't be like an. Is like there? All community do they have like an association or a group or a, 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 a meeting? Group, but they're pretty connected. Do so. they? Oh, let's let Mark answer. Do they have a group? Uh, yeah, some of them are part of the uh, MEA retirement. So I can get information to them if you let me know. If okay. a time or a session that you want them to be part of, we can, um, I can get that information to them really easily. We can certainly meet with them. I would like to, actually. Yeah. Um, probably if, in person would be better. Um, yeah, in fact, yeah. We can figure something out, even out in our office. The entire group every month anyway. And I'm, I'm assuming their times are flexible? Yeah, in fact, they often do things in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, when we're here, the, um, those three days, we could, we could schedule a, a time within those three days. Yeah, if you give me a date and a time, okay. um, I can, or give it to them, they can get it okay. to me. I can, I can forward that information to them. And then, Jen, to your point, you, you did mention a like a general like community slot. Yeah. I, I didn't see anything that really fits that other than, yeah. I mean, parents, but um, anybody who may not be a parent that has an interest in school may want to want to voice their opinion. Yeah, we have. I think should be given okay. an opportunity. Yeah. And uh, I mean, all the other ones are it's business yep. or rotary or. So maybe we can so, build a general community yeah. time slot. Uh, in person or Zoom? Taxpayers. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Tax Tax stakeholders. Taxpayers. Stakeholders. Stakeholders. <laughs> I'm kind of wondering why we have Noon Rotary pulled out from other business, chamber, governmental. Like, could we take the Noon Rotary slot and put taxpayers, stakeholders in there? I think that group is established enough, though, that that's worth giving them the airspace. And there'll be overlap. Yeah. Because there are a lot of business. Business, there'll be foundational. foundation. There's clergy that go to that group. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so that that's my question if we have these rotary folks covered in another group everywhere why do we have doing rotary if, if most of them are gonna be business nonprofit good point they may not show up to go twice and if we could free up that slot for somebody else we, um, we can just let Mike kind of coordinate with mm -hmm. with Brian right on it sounds like we want to add a retiree mm -hmm. one. And then a add, stakeholder. And then just add a general stakeholder yep. community input. So back to the stakeholder question, is it better to be in person or Zoom? And in what time? In person. Okay. okay. I think that does the time matter? Is that an evening one probably? I would say evening. Yeah. I don't know if you could Mike, I'll leave this up to you, but slide it in at five on Thursday before the parents and PTO okay. or something. Central Auditorium on the 11th. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, then we just get the retired group scheduled. Good. Um, advertising package. So typically, well, well, first of all, you can see on page four that our website is a, a pretty robust advertising tool. Um, and if you look at it recently, there's a lot more jobs on there now. Um, they're really starting to um, open up. So 
our website and then the National Association of School Superintendent website, that comes within your base fee for HYA. Um, we always have every state advertised within their local association. So the Michigan one goes out to a number of different associations across Michigan. Um, you can see those are all listed there. So that, that's a given. And then um, if you, I'll come back to the AAS, the big one. So if you talked about the diversity uh, and, and um, so we probably 90% of the time, um, if, if anyone's talking about diversity, we, it's 100%. Um, we want to make sure we advertise in the Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents and then also the National Alliance of Black School Educators. Um, those are two very large organizations um, which will draw some applicants. And you'll see the cost for that's $520. And then you'll see where it's staggered in the timeline. One of the postings is six weeks and one is four weeks. So we kind of strategically put those where we think people might apply. And then the last two neighboring state associations, it's hit and miss. So I say if you take the big AASA package, the big national package, you definitely do not need any other neighboring states. So the, the districts that take the neighboring states usually don't do the big AASA ad. So I think hearing what I heard earlier tonight with the salary conversation, who you want to try to draw for this job, I would definitely delete the neighboring states and I would, I would certainly add on that national uh, Ed Week, AASA, um, that is going to draw people as well. <clears throat> so discussion on any of the options that you have. I think it makes sense to go with Mike's recommendation of the, the AASA, the ALAS, and then the NABSE. We do. Yep. So when you look at, I'm on page six of the outline, when you look at the, the timeline now, so we'll get this job posted in the next couple days, and then you'll expect a phone call, expect an email from probably me, um, and what we'll do is, um, actually, I think Serena's doing your interviews. So one of us will reach out to you where we're going to try to schedule, and we'd like to have this done before the holidays if possible. We need about 20 minutes, maybe 30 tops, but usually about 20 minutes with each board member to give you your individual interview. And that's how we kind of start the process, building that report. So watch for an email from either myself or Serena, and then we will um, get those scheduled. And we, those are we're very, very flexible. They could be phone call or Zoom, and we will do them early in the morning, anytime throughout the day, in the evening, Saturday, Sunday. We'll work around your schedule. So we just have to carve out that 20, 30 minutes. Mike, I, I see in here that the AASA National Conference is February 14th through February 17th, but our postings only through the 18th. Is that correct? I wonder if we push it a couple days so that it's advertised at the conference, folks come home, and they have time to apply. Yeah, um, you're, you're, you're kind of a catch-22 because we've really prolonged your posting. We don't normally have them that long, but we know we're going to be out at the AASA National Convention, so we want your job open during the convention. And so my thought is people are going to see the posting well before that, but they're going to come and talk to us specifically about the job. So I think we're going to be okay, but we, we could see maybe a couple more days. Uh, I would not go more than a few more days after that because you're starting to get late now, and the later you go, it's going to push everything else back. But we actually do a job fair out there. So, and, and we purposely make the posting pretty easy to apply. 
So if anyone is interested in the job, they can get all their materials submitted within a couple hours. Um, and most of these people, if they're looking, they've got their resumes ready to go. It's just the letters of recommendation will, will take longer. Typically, a posting's about six weeks, sometimes eight. Six to eight weeks is norm, the norm. But when you've got, and you, with your search, you've got holidays, and we want to hit that national convention. So you, if you are wondering why some of those postings are different times, like I said, some of them are 30 days, some of them are six weeks. I think the Michigan State one is actually 90 days. So we want to just make sure, we don't want to post it for the first 30 days and have it run out. And you certainly don't want to renew that national package. That, you know, it's very expensive. So we want to put that kind of towards the end of the search. So any questions on the timeline, the advertising packages? Back page of the timeline. March 20th, board conducts final interviews and HYA third party background check. And then it says spring break, but then on the next line it says superintendent's hiring approved and announced by the end of March. So how long does it take to do the third party investigation? And the, that, I think we have a, a challenge right there. So so March 20th. March 20th, we have the final interviews, and that's when we start that back. Once you put up a third party down another line, because you can't, we can't do the background check until you pick your finalist, your, your loan finalist. Okay. So um, that takes about seven days to get that back. So that should work in that time. So we, yeah, and we could. You know, it, it might be early April. I mean, if you want to be safe, you could say early April. Is that seven business days to get it back or seven days? It just depends on how swamped they are. Okay. We've gotten them back in three days and in, in 10 days. But they verify all the college credits, all the license. So it does take, it takes normally seven days. So maybe we should, we should so say. Is there any issue with bumping that? Early April no. when we return? Not at all. No. Okay. I mean, in a, in a public meeting on the 20th, we're going to say who the person is. I mean, like, that's, no? No. That's no. At, oh, it's not. That's, okay. a, that's when we're going to do the background check. Yeah, we got to do the. Everything. So the 20th, we narrow down to one person, and then okay. the background check takes place. Okay. And then in early April, to give us a week or so cushion, We'll make that announcement. And now the official announcement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the community, to the, Jen's point, the yeah, community is going to know, know who the finalist is. Who that is. one selection person is on, on the board meeting. That's public on the 20th. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't go into closed sessions for that. <laughs> no. Yeah. And when do negotiations with the candidate so, occur? So you're correct. The Michigan is public. Yeah. Um, other states, it's not. So what you would normally do then is if you, sometimes you won't even, that night, you might not be ready to make a decision. You might need more time to deliberate. So you, you may have to come back the next week, but if you, if you do make a decision that night and you, you agree, you would make some type of a motion where you're going to offer the position to this person pending contract negotiations and final background check. So now you've named your person, but he doesn't have that, that he or she does not have a contract, and there's no contract that's been approved until that background check comes back. You negotiate the contract, then you have a, at the next board meeting, then you approve the contract. I'm sorry, Jen, I misunderstood what you said. So when when is your April board meeting? April 15th? 
tax day, perfect. So I can just change it to May, April 16th. Will you have any flexibility? How is the is the salary op, uh, negotiated in open session, or how do you, how do you handle? Or sorry, the con, yeah, good. good Almost everything in Michigan is open session. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple things you could maybe do in closed session, but I would definitely consult your legal counsel. Yep. But almost everything is open session, even the interview process. Yep. So do we need another special meeting to do contract negotiation between the 20th and the 15th to have a contract to vote on the 15th? It, when you list the range, it really speeds up that, that contract negotiation. It, it does not take that long. Okay. And a lot of times what, what um, a board will do is they'll say um, the legal counsel, a board president, or a, a subcommittee are the negotiators, but then you bring it to the full board for approval. The contract on the bill. Yep. Okay. What I can say the negotiate terms. You don't have to if you just right. have. The, the you board. say. Right. Right. You would get a recommended. Yeah. From the president, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. So just a couple things that I have. Uh, one, we have a, an action item that's approving the posting. And then I think because we decided on an additional expense, 3920, do we need to motion to approve that the additional advertising expense? Or I think we can just do two motions really quickly. Okay. Sense. All right. Well, let's go through them then. Um, I will accept the motion to approve the superintendent vacancy posting. I'm, I think we'd just be specific about the salary range that we're all voting on. John. So make a motion. By Mr. Hatfield, support by Mr. Waterbach. Any additional discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up, um, I will accept the motion to approve the additional advertising expense in the amount of $3,920. So we don't have to do the My Staff one if we're doing the other stuff? The $100 one? You, you know, you'll, you'll do that one. Yeah. Oh, you'll, okay, so you'll eliminate the Illinois 4, 000, one on there and the Wisconsin 4, 000, one on there. 4,020? Yeah. 4, yes, that's correct. Make a motion to approve the three additional advertising expenditures in the total of $4,020. Second. Motion by Mr. Rausch, uh, support by Ms. Ringgold. Any further discussion regarding the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, one final can adjourn. I will accept the motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Rausch. Second. <laughs> Support by Ms. Horowitz. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Stand adjourned. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome.